Welcome to Red Ice Creations Radio. This is Internet Talk Radio, available through our website, redicecreations.com. I'm your host, Henrik Palmgren, and uh, we are recording from the west coast of Sweden. Thank you for tuning in to this Sunday edition of our program. And uh, today we have back with us on the show our monthly regular, Alan Watt. And it's always a pleasure and a treat to spend time cutting through the matrix with uh, Mr. Watt. And uh, Alan's website, of course, is cuttingthroughthematrix.com, or you can try .net also. Uh, check it out, follow along in his excellent audio blurbs, and uh, take a look at the books and the DVDs and all the material that he's got available there for you. So um, I hope things have been good since, good since we last uh, spoke, Alan. Welcome. It's it's great to have you back on the line. It's a pleasure to be here. Great, great. You know, uh, <coughs> we received a few word <coughs> emails about a, a few weeks ago regarding your website uh, being down and so forth, and your audio blurbs uh, were not available. I guess you had some issues over there, but everything is back and up up and running now, I guess. Yeah, I, I did a. I went over it. I gave a talk on disclosed and verified information on the CIA bringing in the drugs to sell on the streets of the U.S. and rehashing the old Iran-Contra deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone at the top didn't like it, I think. So they uh... rehashed this this kind of stuff and uh, put the word in to get a give me a hard time. <laughs> So did you um, <clears throat> did someone attack the, the the web the web server or something like that? Do you know where this came from? Yeah, Yahoo pulled uh, one of the sites down. Mm -hmm. uh, but round in circles didn't didn't ever really get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. And also at the same time, uh, we're getting viruses and trojans sent into the website. Ah. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, so someone got annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a, a, a hint that you're on the right track. <laughs> oh, this is a sort of nonsense they do. Yeah. They do this kind of stuff for harassment's sake. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's quite easy for them to do since uh, they can get into anybody's site. That's yeah. by law. <laughs> yeah. The government agencies can get into anybody's site and play around with it. And it takes a <clears throat> a lot of time, and uh, I guess that's the that's the main issue in in one sense that it t takes such a long time to get things back up and running again, and yeah. by then you're you know you're behind on the work and behind on email answering and so forth, all of that. Yeah, in fact, one one weekend can set you back uh, two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, quite, quite easily. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're I'm glad things are up and running, and you you have a few uh, <clears throat> you a few mirror sites more now, I guess, because traffic has been heavy on 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 all of your sites, I guess. Yes, and it's also a safety in case again Yahoo could pull the sites at any time. Mm -hmm. And it suddenly dawned on me that you'd lose all your information and then have no backup. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so at least this way, uh, although it's. It could be done, but it's highly unlikely they could pull all the sites at once. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. On different, uh, <coughs> different, different internet uh, uh, ISP companies or something like that. So, so it's yeah. more difficult. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. You know, last time we talked uh, during our regular show, we finished off on a note about the the Mayflower, and uh, maybe it would be appropriate to to spend some time on this, talking about the. Uh, kind of the beginnings of the Americas and, you know, how, why and when, I guess, the conflict uh, continent was, was colonized at first. You, you know, we recently, uh, uh, there were the, what was it, 275th birthday of, of founder and Masonic presidents uh, of the U.S., George Washington. Yeah. Um, and a, a, a simple search, I guess, on, on Wikipedia on, on the Mayflower, you know, of course, states that uh, the Mayflower was the ship that transported the Pilgrim Fathers from Plymouth, England to Virginia, U.S. And uh, uh, Alan, are you saying that there's something to add to that? <laughs> yes, I mean, obviously, th th this wasn't the first part of the colonization, and yet so much uh, attention is given to this particular group coming in. Uh, people have been coming in for a long time beforehand, uh, but um, in, it became almost part of the American tradition that there's something very special about the Mayflower coming in. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've never really gone into it except 
when you follow the history of the Mayflower, uh, it was to do with families from different parts of Europe uh, that were under um, a cover of Christianity. They were tended to be very wealthy families mm-hmm. and um, going under sort of Puritan guise. And their ancestry often were into revolutionaries uh, in different parts of Europe, uh, the Waldenses and different sects. Hmm. Uh, they ultimately all became part of the Puritan movement, and they moved into the U.S. and uh, And even, as I say, the name of the ship, the Mayflower, May Day is their big day mm, yeah. uh, in the mysteries. Hmm. Yeah. So the <clears throat> these are the the, the pilgrims. Uh, um, do you know wh- whether whether why they call it this? The name? Where does it? Well, a come pilgrim it was often, especially in the 1800s, in fact. Uh, it was common in Freemasonic um, meetings when you, when you met someone to call them a pilgrim or, or a traveler. Hmm, yeah. It was one who was on the journey, looking, uh, seeking that which was lost. That's what they would say. Hmm. Are you a pilgrim? Oh. Uh, and so it, it's part of a mystery religion. And I'm sure lots of the, the Puritans came in and they were actually descended from the Albigensians mm-hmm. of Europe. Uh, uh, th- this is a family a bloodline? Uh, that and uh, uh, almost a, a separate religion, mm-hmm. uh, which could almost emulate and simulate Christianity, but it had an esoteric side to it uh, uh, as part of a mystery-type religion. Okay. Uh, um, the, the, the Cathars and the Albigensians rivaled, in parts of Europe, they rivaled the Catholic Church at one time. Hmm. Uh, they right. also had an almost mirror-type image of the Catholic uh, hierarchy structure. They were very wealthy people. Mm-hmm. They had their own bishops and priests, and but they had a comp- almost a, a mirror image and yet an opposite viewpoint on what the God was. Hmm. And the God of the world was their enemy, uh, according to them. Mm-hmm. And therefore, he who ruled the world was Satan. Oh, okay. Hmm. And, did, and did they anything, anything off the world was uh, Satan's, and, the, the, and they also had a form of almost reincarnation belief uh, tucked away, hidden, in the esoteric side of the religion that was kept quiet from the from the, the lower orders. Hmm. It sounds uh, very gnostic, I guess, in in some terms. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and, and also the the um. They believed that it was doing a child no favor uh, to bring them into this world. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm. There's a lot written during the Inquisitions about them. Yeah. We don't know how much is true, because obviously those who are the victors always defame those that they beat. Uh, huh. But but over and over again, we do know they had almost a communal type um, uh, celebratory days or, or festivals which in a sense were uh, orgiastic. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, do you think that some of these actually infiltrated themselves within, you know, the Catholic Church and, and stuff like this? This is, I mean, must have happened. In, in, in oh, I'm time. sure of it. In fact, when they scattered, I saw it, here's, here's the Vatican declaring the last crusade, mm-hmm. um, which was not in the Middle East, it was in parts of Europe. And it was against the Cathars and the Albigensians. Yeah. That was the last crusade that was ordered by the papacy. And um, they, they chased them. They didn't all get killed or slaughtered, but many of them did. Hmm. Um, and you'll find from the Holy Blood, Holy Grail, this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. this is what they're always leading to of those that escaped with the relics of their, of their holy religion. Sure. Uh, they always wrap it in without telling you the, the whole story, hmm. Hmm. because they were wrapped in with the Templars and different organizations, brotherhoods. Yeah. Uh, even though they were mainly a lay-type organization, where they did marry, as opposed to the Knights Templars, they didn't marry. Mm-hmm. But they had their lay organization, and the Cathars and Albigensians seemed to have been it. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Uh, you mentioned the uh, the Puritans also. What's uh, for for those that don't know what 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 is this group? Is this a Christ, uh, Christian group? Yeah, the Puritans uh, were 
uh, it was almost a, a, a reverting to the Old Testament uh, laws, um, where everything became somber. There was to be no dancing, no gaiety, no happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, just hard work uh, uh, and and praising God quietly. Yeah, uh, that was the Puritan movement. That was um, it was often it was really financed from Holland into existence, especially in England through Oliver Cromwell. His whole army mm. was financed by uh, Holland, mm. the, the, the bankers of Holland, yeah. and they took over Britain for a while and introduced the Puritan movement. Hmm. Interesting. So it was a time when everything was very, very strict. Uh, there was no spontaneity. They didn't allow music in the churches. Uh, it was all very, very somber. Ah. They wore black, of course. Um, you know, wh- one thing that comes to mind is is the Amish people. Uh, yeah. Very interesting. Do you think that these are uh, connect with the, with the Purit- Puritans in any way? Uh, you, you will find that all of them have their roots around the same period, time period. Mm-hmm. The Amish uh, and, and different groups originated in Germany. Um, they kept a lot of their traditions and their language often. Uh, when I look at the groups like the Amish or the Mennonites, I, I see it a bit differently. I see them all almost like um, experiments in controlled breeding. Hmm. <laughs> Because you're, you're, you're taking a group out of a population, and within that group you arrange marriages, and their, their marriages are arranged. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can select under a controlled study of who marries whom, and it's almost like an experiment in breeding. That's how I see these things. Yeah, yeah. And the same with the Mormons. Hmm. And, they, and these, uh, do they pick each other's, you know, wives and, and so forth there too, in the, in the Mormons? Yeah, uh, very, very often um, uh, their, their wives are picked for them. And in the Mennonites, for instance, uh, there's big money involved in marriages because they, they tend to be pretty wealthy people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the Mennonites and Amish. And um, when, when weddings take place, it's almost a business deal between the families because big estates are involved, mm-hmm. uh, often very large tracts of land. Uh, lots of money. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot more than just uh, uh, they don't allow them just to pick their own mate. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, w- one thing that comes to mind when speaking about the uh, uh, the Mormons is uh, the f- it feels like there's a lot of also Old Testament connections and and going back to to the stuff about Israel and so forth. I know that there are some Freemasonic connection to it all, but. Do, do you know about the the Sol, uh, Salt Lake, uh, the area? Area is the connection between Israel uh, and and the Salt Lake uh, in in uh, uh, what's I don't, I don't know. Do you know, do you know what the region yeah. is called? Yeah, there's a Dead Sea. Yeah. As well, the Dead Sea in Israel is salt. The, yeah, so that's the, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And so there's a connection to an extent there, but I think it's even more so than that. Um, Uh, Joe Smith, Joseph Smith, is the founder of the Mormon group. Yeah. And once again, uh, you, you'll find that Joe Smith was a, a Mason, a Freemason. Yeah. Uh, you, you can find that, that they're, uh, they have a, an order called uh, the elect for men within Mormonism. Mm-hmm. And when you become an electi and you're elected in, you go through the same rituals and the same secret oaths as Freemasonry, they're identical, they are the same. Hmm. Hmm. They're one and the same thing. Yeah. And I think, uh, once again, this is another control group for experimentation on controlled breeding. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. Um, you know, regarding the, the Dead Sea, of course, we <clears throat> I guess there's a lot of salt lakes around the place. We even got a, a salt lake or, or a salt salt sjö, as we call it in Sweden, uh, salt sjöbaden and, and stuff like this. Uh, yeah. So I guess this is a, lo- a lot of places that this kind of connects with. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. mm, um, You know, re- regarding, again, I guess returning to, to the Swedish theme here, but that's how it is, uh, considering that we are, we are here as it is now. But, um, y- you know, Uh, regarding the the Mayflower itself, I, I don't know if you guys either in Canada or in the U.S. Ha- have something like this, but uh, we have 
uh, school kids going around door to door and selling uh, the Mayflower on on uh, I guess this is on the day of of, of May first actually. Uh, of course, connecting this with the uh, the big you know union protesters and I guess you have Labor Day over there and this is on May first uh, also isn't that right? That's right. Yeah. It's a, it's a time of regeneration. And if you go back into the older mysteries, which existed even in pre-Christian times, they had the Maypole yeah. celebration, where you danced around the Maypole with its red and white streamers coming down, mm-hmm. the male and the female. Yeah. And, and it was a time for, as I say, regeneration. Um, it was a time also when the young were encouraged uh, to go off with the young into the forest and... and um, have intercourse. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> the children that came, were produced or were conceived on May Day uh, were often called Robin. And oh. that's where you get to tear the name Robinson. Because oh. they were conceived on that particular day. <laughs> These are all pre Christian celebrations. Oh. There was an excellent movie put out years ago. It was one of the first uh, more. Um, esoteric movie that, that Rob has ever created, mm-hmm. uh, and it was called The Wicker Man. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. the first one, made in the 1960s, I believe. And that showed you uh, the May uh, celebrations with the Maypole, with all the sexual innuendo uh, involved, and the old pagan magic rituals involved within it. Ah, okay. Um, huh. Yeah, because, you know, uh, a lot, we have a lot of stuff. Also, of course, you know, the, we have the Maypole, and this is, of course, on on Midsummer's Eve primarily that we uh, up here in Sweden at least have have the Maypole and all this. And this is, of course, the symbol itself is, you know, two circles uh, hanging on one pole, uh, actually pointing down into the earth. You know, it's like the the willy fertilizing the the earth, basically. That's, that's so, right. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and these are very old. Um Pre-Christian uh, parts of a religion, mm-hmm. this, the pantheistic religion. Yeah, uh, and that, that's the, the amazing thing. The more you go into the mystery religions, you'll find they're completely interwoven uh, with the standard religions we're given. Yeah, yeah, and hidden within the standard religions. Indeed, uh, through all of them, that they all have the same esoteric stories uh, hidden within them. And behind it all, you, you find a, obviously a connecting factor, and maybe even a connecting priesthood that run them all. Mm. I think we still do run them all. Yeah. yeah. All the religions. And you will see their symbols all around you growing up, and most folk take them for granted. Yeah. <laughs> they don't realize they're looking at an actual religious symbol. Whether it's a me uh, pole, um, the rose, you'll see the rose above every um, church door, over old uh, church door mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, symbolizing you know um, the spirit the soul um, and, and of course the light shines through onto the priest within mm-hmm. and he represents the son of God he is the son of God uh, during that time the light shines on him we, we, we see we live in a world where people see things they practice things and they don't know what they mean absolutely yeah uh, it's a it's a big a big ritual ongoing and we have 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 no clue, and I think we can even pick up on this in in in, in modern culture. I mean, uh, I don't know how far this goes back, when, but when you said regarding the regeneration aspect of this, um, uh, we actually again in Sweden have have something um, uh, called a March, also taking place on May 1st. Actually, where uh, again a bunch of school kids are going out. Uh, I guess. Almost, most definitely, if if there is forest around in the area, there there is a forest, uh, a walk through the forest, and you know the kids have uh, uh, have things with them. They have built uh, or built constructed const- constructed rather uh, stuff in paper, tied it to to sticks and so forth that makes sounds. And and I think that the at the time when I you know when when we do this when we we're small we don't understand it but it feels like it's a part of a ritual that actually is about uh, awakening spring in in the area yes 
um, and and that's what it feels like to me, and and that's what's you know, I guess we could connect this with with Easter also because this is basically during the same uh, same period I think. Uh-huh. Um, and again, it's we go all back. All connected, to absolutely. Yeah. As I say, they used to have the, the the May celebration, and what you'd find is that the young girls would would dress uh, well, they put garlands of flowers around them, and uh, symbolizing the feminine again, mm. the fertility. Yeah. The, the males would often dress up uh, with green, and so they, they symbolize nature. That's the green man of Freemasonry. Mm-hmm. Uh, every mason, in a, in, a, in a sense, becomes a green man, the man of nature, the, the man of the woods. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the residing priest or the head man would have green, but he'd it also have a red, a red hat on. So he portrayed the robin, you see. Yeah. And uh, again, that's why they called him the son of robin. All those that were con- uh, conceived because of uh, the May mating uh, were called Robinson. Hmm. Robin, Robin Hood? Yeah, that too. That Robin Hood is all symbolic of that. He wore a cloak of green. Yeah, you know? yeah. He lived in the green woods. Um, and I, I even, even heard that in, in Sherwood, Sherwood uh, f- the Sherwood Forest was actually the home of, of the Rothschilds. Uh, do you know about this? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, it's closer to the truth, uh, and it's much, much older than that, even. Mm-hmm. Uh, because um, when Rome first came into Britain, they didn't make their headquarters in what became London. They moved into uh, that area uh, where Lincoln was, mm-hmm. at Lincolnshire, and they called the, the, their main city Bath. W- uh, B- B-A-S? B A T H. Oh, okay, okay. And and they did have the Roman baths there, the the, the hot water springs. Yeah. And they had uh, they had piped and plumbing and everything. Hmm. Amazing. And you can still have walks around the old places today, but that was also um, their banking headquarters mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. they first came into Britain. And uh, if you look at the old Roman names that they gave to those parts of Britain, that part was called Hiberacum. Hmm, okay. Hiberacum, yeah. Hiberacum. Do you know yeah, what it... It's their banking headquarters. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> do, you know, do you know what it means, Hiberacum? Uh, well, it, it really meant Hebrew, from Hebrew. Okay, hmm. Because that was the bankers of ancient times. Oh, okay. Probably nothing to do with the more modern ones, but hmm. that, these were the bankers, and they called that, that whole area... Uh, Hebraicum. Hmm. Uh, it later be called, be, became called York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that York, for a long time, was the center of power for royalty. The Duke of York, mm-hmm. and uh, and and the banking enterprise of old England for a long time. Mm-hmm. And wherever the bankers moved, they called the place York. Now you have New York. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. There we go, yeah, round and round we go in these circles all the time. Huh? <laughs> yeah, from 2,000 years uh, up to the present. Yeah, indeed. Um, you know, regarding the green, w- uh, when is uh, St. Patrick's Day over there in, in the States? Um, it's not on the same date, St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Yeah, that's hmm. later. Okay, so this is uh, might not have something to do with the, the, with the green and the spring cel- celebration in that sense. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, in a sense, it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a different date, but it's at all, anywhere you, where you see green, you, you're symbolizing nature. Yeah. And uh, for instance, in the nearest town to me, there was a, a Masonic group for the Knights of Columbus, mm-hmm. uh, who had their headquarters in Sudbury, mm-hmm. and they had an artist paint on the entire end of the wall of the house or the building. Uh, a picture of a woman sitting with her child on a park bench, mm. and behind her is a big tree. It's green. In the tree is a face. That's the face of the green man of nature. Mm-hmm. Now her husband is standing up. He's a Freemason. His face is also reflecting green, and his son, that the, the, the woman's holding, is also green. It's telling you that nature passes through the male line. And uh, and of course, green symbolizes life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
is this uh, i don't know if we can connect uh, these two but uh, the green man and um, also known as pan is is this the same uh, deity yeah pan comes into it too uh, pan uh, again is the, the sort of goat man yeah uh, he's he's the climber as well he climbs to high places he's got the ability to go up the mountains and go higher than other other species yeah that's the symbology of pan but he's also a man of nature and he will follow nature now for those who control the world they they control it through understanding human nature both male and female mm -hmm. and they use either one according to the to the time period and the agenda they will focus more on changing the woman's outlook or the male's outlook depending on what suits them at the time hmm <laughs> interesting you know um, again regarding i guess if we are to take back this to the uh, regeneration aspect of this um, symbology connecting um, the bunny with spring and with uh, with the playboy more uh, yes. more stuff like like this going on in in our modern culture <laughs> Re referring back to all of this, you know, um, uh, I don't know if, if you have, w I, I remember an incident uh, uh, going on here. I guess it was last last Easter we had, uh, I think it was uh, v Victoria Silverstedt, one of these Swedish, you know, fold out centerfold babes, basically, on the front covers on on the uh, uh, on the uh, on the bill billboards. What, what is it called? Uh, the the billboard, you know, the paper when you're gonna buy the buy the paper. Yes. The headline um, sign at the front, with uh, with with this picture of this you know uh, woman on on exactly on the day of 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 Easter and again I, it felt like this you know regeneration ritual going on right right in the front of, uh, right in the face you know basically uh -huh. uh, trying to get you know people I guess ar aroused around that period and so forth I don't know I'm gonna track it yes. uh, again this year and see if if this is something that returns I don't know but. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Everything that you see uh, when it comes to these rituals and formula, uh, formulas uh, fixed to dates and times, which have been here for a long, long time, you can always count on it as part of an inner religion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that has always existed within your culture and is known by those who join the so-called, well, not all of them, but the ones who get higher up in the mystery schools, they understand it. Yeah, yeah. But the bunny uh, rabbit is um, always al always part of it. Uh, uh, you can actually break it down. You can break down the names they even give to things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to understand them. Uh, they say that we speak our reality into existence. Yeah. And, and in fact, we're speaking their reality into existence. Um, bunny rabbit, uh, if you just take the spoken word and forget how it's really spelled, but it's B and then you have UN mm -hmm. for one in French. Okay. And then mm -hmm. you have Y, you see? You'll, you'll find the Y crops up all through masonry and higher masonry. Yeah. Because it's the male chromosome. The Y chromosome, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, I remember and that. And we know that that eventually they want to create a, a perfected man um, and they, they really want to ultimately do away with the female altogether as being irrelevant in a, a system to come in the future mm. they've mm. worked on that that's the whole push towards uh, genetics uh, in one direction only and that's to perfect man yeah not for man's sake but to be man to be a better slave so Y is a representation of the male, always. Hmm. Hmm. There'll be one Y. <laughs> yeah. huh. um, it, also, of course, we can. I guess we could uh, <clears throat> tie this back to the stage uh, stage magician pr pulling a bunny out of a uh, of the rabbit, right? Of the hat. <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah, of course. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's right there apparently, and and. Um, Regarding, I guess May, the May Day again. Um, do you know if this actually is the the, the birthday, so to speak, of the of the Illuminati, seventeen seventy six? It seems to be.
the uh, uh, yeah, they, they put that down as that. There's no doubt they picked that day to coincide with that which they already believed in. Yeah, they they picked that day to to match the the, the religion they already followed. Hmm. They were basically bringing it out into the open for the first time. Um, May, of course, is the is the fifth uh, the fifth month of of our year, and and again, I guess, as you say, this is re regeneration, and and uh, the fir- first. I don't know if May is considered the first uh, summer month, or f- I guess it's the first spring month. I guess. Yes, and it also depends on whose calendar you go by. Yeah, sure, indeed, yeah. You, you see, in, in, in the, the old Roman Empire, uh, pre-Christian, their year would start in March. Mm-hmm. And so, you, you had, you, it May was the Trinity, the first part of the Trinity in hmm. the old religion. Okay. And uh, now, nowadays, they have the five-pointed star to represent uh, Freemasonry, and so it, it's the fifth month. Fifth month, yeah, of course. Um, and I don't know if, if uh, what's your take, what your take on this is, but um, I get the sense that the, the United States, as as a whole, kind of is something that is encompassing the female, or, or you know, it's like the manifestation of 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 a goddess. Considering, I guess, the the Statue of Liberty and all of this going into that, is is this uh, something you you you, you uh, would agree on? The Statue of Liberty is neither male nor female. Hmm. It's a hermaphrodite. Okay. Hmm. Because if it was a female, look at the muscles on it. <laughs> yeah, I gotta check that out. I haven't look thought about it. Look at the thickness it, of the neck. Okay, yeah. And uh, uh, you look at the shape of the body. Mm-hmm. And then you look at the Oliphant and those guys who designed it and brought it over from France. Yeah. Who are all high masons, whose symbol often was the hermaphrodite, the perfection of the two into one, hmm. but where logic would ultimately uh, rule over the, over the emotion. Yeah, yeah. And you'll find um, uh, the symbol of the sun in different times has taken a more male form or a female form. When the capital of the ancient world was in was in the island of Rhodes mm-hmm, mm. in the Mediterranean, the upper Mediterranean. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they had, the, they had the, what they called the Colossus, that was their symbol, yeah. and they had a, a, a naked Apollo overlooking the harbor, mm-hmm. just like the one in New York, mm-hmm. with the crown on his head. It's the crown of thorns of Jesus, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. The thorns are the rays of the sun coming out. That's what oh. it symbolizes. And the one they had uh, in Rhodes, ancient Rhodes, he also had it, held up a torch, meaning he was a light bringer. Yeah. He was Prometheus. Hmm. As well, yeah. Who, you know, so uh, this is the old mystery religion coming all down through all the ages, and always appearing at different times, and the public don't even know what they're looking at. Hmm. So but Jesus was the same thing. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, and and you you have said that uh, uh, in in other I don't know if it was a blurb I was listening listening to, but. Um, Regarding the the idea that that you know it's the as you say uh, the same the same religion over and over just prepackaged in different I guess new forms new ideas and new new names basically I guess yes it's not the same thing yeah and uh, the, the same thing even the ancient one of, of the Colossus of Rhodes uh, was built with uh, thousands of tons of bronze just the same way and copper. Hmm. Uh, this one here, for a Christianized era, they had to at least give it a clothing. <laughs> but if you look at the shape, as I say, technically it's neither male nor female. <laughs> it's the hermaphrodite. And this is to reflect the the aspects of the of the sun. It, it's part of the sun. Mm-hmm. It's also um, it's, it's even deeper than that. It's to do it's to do with the ancient religion, which they believe in. Uh, for instance, uh, they believe that you can be a god on earth if you rise high enough. You'll find even in, in, the, in the Christian versions of Christianity, mm-hmm. like the King James in England, or Scotland, England, mm-hmm. uh, they changed, uh, I think it was the 8th Psalm, where it, d- it describes man, and it said, 
And now in Hebrew it says he was made a little lower than the gods. Hmm. Uh, King James had it changed and put him lower than the angels because he didn't want people believing they were sacred. Oh. He wanted to rule over them. Hmm. <laughs> and so there's an other, another religion hidden within uh, which is to do with godhood. And it's contained within Christianity too. Yeah. Uh, it's also an old Judaism where you, you, you'll see um, uh, Moses and so on uh, meeting um, Melchizedek. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Melchizedek, and often statues of Melchizedek, are to be found in the higher Freemasonic lodges hmm. because, because they gave to Melchizedek the same tribute as you would give to a god. Hmm. And so they, it, there's an esoteric religion to do with gods who walk the earth. Yeah. Um, you know, we, regarding regarding the the angels, I've, uh, there is an an order here in uh, in Sweden called called the Seraphim Order, um, yeah. which of course is is a Hebrew um, word for for a particular class of angels. Yeah. Um, and as it is now, I think that this order only only foreign people and, of course, Swedish royalty are, are allowed within the order. But <clears throat> when you actually look at the names associated with the seraphim, it is it is names like you know Lucifer and uh, uh, Astarte, and there there are a number of, of others in there. But uh, it, again, it feels like they're actually attributing this order to the the class of the fallen angels. Oh, absolutely. So I mean, um, but, but that's the inner one because the. Uh, now, they say themselves, at the higher levels, now, whether it's for public consumption or if it's the truth, you can, you can always guess. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they say that they believe they're descended from the rebels who were cast here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And the reason for their inbreeding, supposedly, is because when they were cast here, there were already humans here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but they had, they, being they were pure spirits, so they had to form the first human bodies for themselves to inhabit, which were perfect. So they willed matter into into shaping bodies for themselves. Yeah, hm. it's a nice fairy tale, you know. Yeah, sure. But but uh, they say that when they started to inbreed with the population that was here, they began to lose their special powers, and so they had to go back to keeping genealogies and inbreeding again. <laughs> and sure enough, uh, whether people like it or not, one thing is undeniable that right up to the present day, uh, these people do have their mates selected from long genealogical lines. Yeah. Indeed. Very, very old lines. So, I mean, do uh, and that can't be denied. Ex exactly. Do you, I mean, do you think that there actually is, is something to the concept, you know, that, that these, I mean, or, or is this... Are, are they trying to, you know, create these myths about themselves or, or surrounding themselves? What, what do you think? <coughs> well, there's two ways to look at it. One is, yeah, it, it could be intrigue for the public because they love to give us uh, drama to talk about mm, sure. and be mystified by. And then there's a practical side to it because going back even to Plato, who was a member of the Greek aristocracy, uh, or royalty, you might say, even, mm, yeah. who was trained, like all aristocracy was trained from Greece and Egypt, and taught the whole mysteries. Um, he said the same thing. He, he, he showed how the, he could differentiate himself and his own kind, his own class, from the rest of the people. Mm. And, and he would do it by dialogue and proof, by intellect. Mm. <laughs> and what he said was, he says, uh, he says, the reason that we, the aristocracy, understand concepts and sciences is because it's familiar to us because we reincarnate that's what he said hmm. <laughs> and and the other bunch don't uh, they were just uh, like the egyptians said the commoners who picked their own mates once they died their souls just withered away hmm. yeah and didn't carry on with any memory hmm. uh, that was the old the old belief of the old religions yeah uh, but Plato also had a practical side because he said he was into eugenics. 
as they all were, and that's the practical side, mm-hmm. uh, is that if you want, say, for instance, a good scientist and, uh, uh, who has to deal with physics, you would obviously pick a woman and a male who were both very good at the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> with a, a fairly good chance, the offspring could inherit the same abilities, especially if you then taught them at a very early age to be very, very good at that. And so they understood that, that, that just like you're breeding animals for domestic animals. Yeah. Uh, and he explained that in his book, The Republic, uh, for the, the world to come, that they would create new types of humans for specialized jobs and so on. Hmm. And uh, the, the guardian class, as he called his class, would run the world and control the world uh, and always interbreed to keep the same qualities they had then, which was superior intellect. Hmm. Um, uh, r- regarding regarding the inter- interbreeding and and the keeping the 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 lines or the bloodlines. I mean, <clears throat> I, I remember. Uh, I don't know if this was a news item or just speculation, but uh, that actually drew parallels between. Uh, I think it was one of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs. I can't remember uh, his name now, but but that. Uh, the the Bush family line actually was related to these guys, and and again I don't know if this is the truth, but I mean, do you think that they actually can sit up there on the on these power thrones today and actually believe that today, that stuff? Uh, they could believe it, or they could be the patsies. Uh, what I found in this system, uh, at the top, they have a group like Plato talked about, yeah, who did technically they did no work. Anyone who does any kind of work is inferior. Hmm. So all of those who work in, in, the, in the public eye, the public image, mm-hmm. are still workers. And for good workers who have been promised to, to be brought up into godhood, you might say, mm-hmm. um, it's good to fool them as well. Hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised. If, uh, and they have tremendous egos, so they love to be flattered. Yeah with news such as, yeah, you're related to an ancient pharaoh. For <laughs> <instance>. <laughs> uh, you'd, be, you'd be amazed at how incredibly egotistical these people are uh, and how they love to be told uh, this kind of story about themselves. Sure, sure. You know, I know that Prince Charles was on the media a few years ago, mm-hmm. and he said to himself, he says, oh, he says, I go all the way back to the to David of the, you know, the tribe of Judah. Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. And and then in another interview, he says, I go all the way back to Noah. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, I mean, this this stuff keeps coming up, but but the line of of Cain seems to be in there a lot. Yeah. Um, And and I I don't know why that is at this point yet, but uh, do you got any ideas? Yeah, Uh, what it is, the Old Testament is a rule book for a system. And under the guise of giving you, you stories, uh, they can camouflage the system. And that's why that book is used in every Masonic temple, because that's the mm. rule book for how the system works. Mm, yeah. Uh, there's allegories behind the outer stories. So the allegories have the real meaning. The outer stories are meant for public consumption. Yeah. Um, Cain comes from the same root word as king. Mm -hmm. It comes from the same root word as Cohen, which is priest. And Cohen is priest. Mm -hmm. And even coin, because they introduced the first money. Uh, So all of that is to do with the system itself, a priesthood that runs this this particular system. Mm -hmm. This system is artificial. The old system was natural. The pre-coinage, pre-moneyed system was natural. Hmm. So what they tell you in a biblical sense is that Cain, who was, uh, and and again, they'll say that, oh, he was the offspring of Lucifer and Eve, you see. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Meaning Lucifer was wisdom, married to to Eve, produced an intellect. Hmm. And so his descendants, like Tubal Cain, become the first artificers they made they were scientists yeah yeah they created weaponry and they could work metals in other words this system that we know today uh which is all materialistic and to do with sciences Mm -hmm. is to do with a pre
priesthood going back for thousands and thousands of years. Hmm. A secret society which always keeps the knowledge of science uh, hidden from the public and gives us a very old version of science hmm. so that we never figure out how far ahead we really are. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this, this, this keeps on coming up again and again. Uh, I mean, um, and as you say, two, two ball cane, I guess one of the one of the builders of yeah. the uh, Solomon's Temple, I guess. Uh, and he was a craftsman, a, a blacksmith or something like that. And, and again, this could be connected with, with uh, uh, the deity of, of Vulcan. Uh, well, Vulcan, yeah, Vulcan was the old thunder god. Mm, Thor. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the, the the volcano god. Uh, the volcanos they call them. Hmm. Uh, so sure, it's all connected. Uh, it's all a, as I say, within Bibles, you're you're given a truth, which is esoteric, which is never explained by ministers or priests mm-hmm. in the public because they, they they don't know themselves. Yeah. But there's a a, a a complete inner story to do primarily with sciences hidden inside the Old Testament. Hmm. And the whole idea... See, once you think of... Uh, 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 read a story, and you take... Uh, you picture the people as people. Hmm. You've lost it. It's written in such a way as to confuse you. Once you imagine a person struggling through the desert, you'll remember that for the rest of your life, and it's hard to see the meaning behind. It's nothing to do with real people. It's to do with a system and branches of a system that keeps the system going. Hmm. It's an inner religion. Hmm. And so uh, Cain is just a a symbol of uh, an artificer who made stuff for war, Hmm. you see? And through war you conquer others and you create empires. Sure. And you dominate and use slavery, etc. And and you do it through craftiness. You're a craftsman. Yeah. And you understand the metals through science, in other words. So it's all to do with the sciences. Indeed. And Uh, sure enough, in the Middle Ages, when the Rosicrucians came forward, uh, they said that they would conquer nature by understanding nature. In other words, through science. hmm. You would perfect that, meaning the world and everything in it, and especially man himself. They would perfect man by the sciences, by understanding and unlocking the secrets of nature. Hmm. And that's been their goal, not just since then, that was their goal thousands of years ago. <clears throat> I mean, there is no, in that kind of philosophy, there is no, I mean, no sense or contact uh, in that sense with a with a godlike character that actually, you know, arrange and create natures according to, you know, a that all you see around you actually is is perfect because it it works and goes around and so forth and sustains itself and but but in in this philosophy it seems like again I guess co- connecting back with the with the first group we were talking about that actually sees nature and all of this in that as kind of uh, as a, uh, like Satan's creation basically I don't know. <laughs> well, what, what it is is, is that, that uh, they give you a story of, of a Lucy Satan and Lucifer. Two different characters. Mm, yeah, sure. And Satan was uh, was um, the Arabs call it shaitan, mm-hmm. a shaitan, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so it also comes from the root word Saturn. Yeah. You see. Yeah. Uh, and so Saturn uh, in the mystery religions, uh, uh, that's where all priests and so on come from. They wear the black robe. Yeah, yeah. So Saturn is a part of a system we live in. And that's where you see judges wearing black robes. Yeah. Uh, the people in university wearing black robes. Uh, that's that's part of the inner religion. Um, you run. They run the sciences mm-hmm. of the system and the law of the system. So Lucifer was a different one. Lucifer was that the, the most intelligent one. So his gift was intelligence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he also was the chief musician, meaning through the use of the muses, as the Greeks would call it, the muses, mm-hmm. he could uh, captivate uh, and hold a culture uh, through his ability of music and drama, etc. Hmm. <laughs> so, so, in other words, culture creation. Yeah. You could lead the people through, through like, 
like a bull by the nose. <laughs> uh, I can understand how to use the muses. Mm. And so you, each one has a gift. And what they're telling you there is each part of this particular system and how it works. Yeah. How it's run. And how the general population have no idea that nothing in their system is theirs and and that they have no say in it. We are directed along a course pre-planned, not destined, but planned mm. um, by people who understand this, this very old religion. Yeah. And they have the, all the money in the world to do it. Uh, they hire thousands of think tanks. Uh, they have the next 100, 200, 300 years mapped out already. Yeah. Uh, hmm. They knew in the 1500s that towards the end of the millennium, and they wrote about it 500 years ago, that they would make the biggest changes the world has ever seen. And they would also unite the world. They knew that then. Huh. You know, this is this is very interesting, and I, <clears throat> I want to... Um, uh, continue on this on this theme just in a few minutes when we continue to- talking in this subscriber section and kind of I guess tie this together in a way with um, uh, you know in correlation to the discovery of of the Americas uh, connecting you know uh, Cortez and Pizarro I guess working for the Vatican and this idea that as you say that they actually 500 years ago was in this region uh, and and I'm I'm gonna ask you if you know if 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 there could be a connection with the Maya people and so forth here, but um, one thing that just comes to mind, of course, is regarding regarding the time, as you say, and, and connecting with with Saturn, because I, I guess that this is uh, Saturn is is also known as as Kronos or the, That's right. the crown or you know the guy with the with the what's it called the the hourglass basically and the sickle, right? The sickle. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we have the uh, the the communist uh, socialistic uh, connecting with this as we were talking about uh, our last month very much so <laughs> yeah wow. so uh, yeah there we have it um, you know we have just about one minute left here in this section but uh, as, as always I'd, I'd like to finish off uh, you know if they're leaving the floor open for a minute or so if there's anything you want to share with us or of course uh, plug your website and, and you got a few books out there and DVDs and so forth Yes, there's stuff they can they can purchase. There's a lot of free stuff there um, on www.cuttingthroughthematrix.com, and I'll be putting I put more up every week, and uh, I go into the mysteries here and there, and I will be putting a whole series out on the mysteries with the histories, uh, with the agenda from A to Z. Hmm. Uh, it's not pleasant, but. Uh, <laughs> People have to know the truth if they want to do anything about it, yeah. and they have to be willing to look at the truth uh, to change things. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so there we go. C- cutting through the matrix.com or try dot net uh, to reach Alan's website and do support his work. Uh, as I said, check out the website. A lot of uh, books and DVDs and material for you right there. But uh, Alan and I will continue in the subscriber section now. So uh, we will just take a short break and we will be right back. You have been listening to Red Ice Creations Radio and you can find us at redicecreations.com Who are we? Where do we come from? And where are we going? Welcome. Welcome. This is Red Ice Radio. 